Hello children, welcome to the video session of Computer Science of Standard 6. Today we are going to learn the lesson Computer Fundamentals. Come, let's get started with the lesson. Chapter 1 Computer Fundamentals Introduction Computer is an electronic data processing machine capable of performing millions of operations with tremendous speed. It has the capacity of storing large volume of data which can be used in future. Computer only follows the instruction given by the user without any strain, self-thinking or reasoning. With the above qualities, computer can be used in almost all fields. Computer consists of three main units namely input unit, central processing unit and output unit. First we are going to see the input unit. The input unit is a means of communication between the computer and the user. To solve any problem, a set of instructions and data are fed into the computer through this unit. These instructions are converted into a series of electronic pulses which the computer can understand and later send to the central processing unit. Some of the commonly used input devices are keyboard and mouse. Central processing unit. It is in this unit that the entire work is done. It takes information from the input unit process them according to the instruction that the computer has received and then the process data is sent to the output unit. CPU is also called as the brain of the computer. This unit consists of three subunits namely memory unit, control unit, arithmetic and logic unit. Output unit this unit gives out the processed data that is result in user readable form. Some of the commonly used output devices are monitor, printer, speaker, plotter and projector. The result seen on the monitor is referred as soft copy and the result got in the printed form on a paper is referred as hard copy. How does the computer work? The working principle of computer can be explained with the help of a block diagram as the internal structure of the machine cannot be drawn. After receiving the data from the input unit, the processing is carried out by the subunits of CPU like arithmetic and logic unit, memory unit and control unit. Next, we are going to see the subunit of CPU, control unit. This unit coordinates all other units of the computer. It directs the input unit to send data to memory unit for storage and then to ALU for further processing. It transfers the processed data from ALU to memory unit and finally directs it to the output unit for display. The next subunit of CPU is arithmetic and logic unit. This unit performs arithmetic calculations and logical operations. All data are sent here for processing and after manipulation the control unit directs the result to memory unit. This unit consists of accumulators and registers. Accumulator stores the result of mathematical calculations temporarily till the control unit gives the transfer instruction. Registers are small memory of CPU which stores digital information. Memory unit. This unit is also called as main memory or primary memory. This unit helps in storing information during processing. To store data, this unit has many storage locations. Each one identified by a unique number known as address. It also stores intermediate results which is used for further processing. The primary memory is of two types namely RAM and 
room. Next, we are going to see the primary memory RAM. RAM stands for random access memory. This is a temporary memory since the information stored in it is lost when the power is switched off. Hence, it is called as volatile memory. There are three types of RAM, namely DRAM, that is dynamic random access memory, SRAM, that is static random access memory, then CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. The information stored in this memory is permanent in nature and is not erased even when the power goes off. Hence, it is called as non-volatile memory. The information stored in this memory is written by the manufacturers. There are three types of ROM namely P-ROM, EP-ROM and EA-ROM. P-ROM that is programmable read-only memory. In P-ROM, a programmer can permanently store programs into the chip, thus it is varied from ROM, whereas in ROM it can be programmed, but instead the program is burnt into the chip by the manufacturer himself. Next, EP-ROM, that is erasable programmable read-only memory. In AP-ROM, we can erase the program already stored in this chip and later a new program can be programmed on the same chip. It can be erased by removing the chip from the circuit board and exposing it under ultraviolet rays for a few minutes. The program in AP-ROM is permanent in nature until it is erased and hence it is non-volatile. Next, EA-ROM, that is electrically alterable read-only memory is similar to that of EP-ROM except that it can be reprogrammed without removing the chip from the circuit board. That is, it can be reprogrammed electrically by a matter of milliseconds. The advantage of EA-ROM is that it can be reprogrammed partially or completely which is not possible in the case of EP-ROM. Units of Memory as solids are measured in grams and kilograms, liquids are measured in milliliters and liters. Computer memory is measured in bytes. A byte is made up of 4 bits. A bit is a binary digit which represents 0 or 1. Input Devices An input device is the device that is used to input data to the computer. An input unit takes the input and converts it into binary form so that it can be understood by the computer. Some of the commonly used input devices are keyboard, mouse, scanner, digital camera, joystick and touchscreen. First we are going to see the input device keyboard. Keyboard is the most commonly used input device which is used to enter data into the computer. It consists of typewriter like keys to enter data. Computer keyboards are similar to electronic typewriter keyboard with some additional keys. The keyboard deducts the key pressed and generates the corresponding ASCII code which is recognized by the computer. What is ASCII code? It's nothing but American standard code for information interchange. There are different types of keyboards such as standard keyboard, multimedia keyboard, internet keyboard, wireless keyboard, bluetooth keyboard, etc. Next we are going to see the mouse and the scanner. A mouse is an input device. When we click on the button, the mouse sends information to the computer. It is an alternative way to interact with the computer besides a keyboard. When the user moves the mouse, the mouse pointer also moves in the screen. The different types of mice are scroll mouse, optical mouse, wireless mouse, etc. Next, scanner. Scanner is an input device that is used to read or scan images or text and convert them to digital form. It creates an electronic version of the document that can be viewed and edited on the computer. There are many different types of scanners available based on the size, cost, clarity, etc. 
one of the most commonly used scanner is flatbed scanner next we are going to see the web camera and joystick web camera is commonly called webcam webcam is an input device which is used to capture images webcam is the combination of web and video camera it is mainly used in online chatting video conferencing videos still photographs and broadcast them on the web joystick joystick is a popular input device joysticks are often used to control video games and have one or more push buttons whose state can be read by the computer touch screen touch screen is an input device that allows the user to operate pc by simply touching the display in the screen region such as icons or graphical buttons the touch screen enables the user to interact directly with what is displayed rather than using a mouse or any other intermediate device touch screen monitors have become very popular as the price has steadily dropped when compared to the ones in that last decade output devices the output devices helps us to see the final result any device that outputs information from a computer is called an output device example of output devices include monitor printer speaker plotter projector headphone but the most commonly used output devices are monitors speakers and printers in that first we are going to see the monitors the monitor is an output device used to display the result it is also called as screen or visual display unit that is vdu the monitors are of two types one is monochrome monitor another one is color monitor the color monitor further classified into three types that is crt cathode ray tube monitor lcd that is liquid crystal display monitor next led that is light emitting diode monitor monochrome monitor monochrome monitor uses single color and it resembles the black and white tv they are available in three different base colors namely soft white green phosphor and amber the soft white monochrome monitor was very commonly used nowadays these monitors are not in use as the advent of new technologies have made monitors more compact and easy to use color monitor color monitors are very similar to color tv which can display different colors the color monitors are capable of displaying different colors using the combination of the base colors red green and blue the monitors are also available in different sizes such as 14 inches 17 inches 21 inches and 32 inches the display is seen in the monitor with the help of cathode ray tube that is crt these are the oldest among all the available models these days the best thing in these monitors is that they are cheaper in price and their drawback is their weight size and they consume more power lcd monitor that is liquid crystal display monitor lcd monitor use ccfl backlights which contain mercury LCD monitors are much thinner, lighter, use less energy and provide a greater graphics quality compared to CRT monitors. Next, LED monitor that is light emitting diode monitor. LED monitor is basically the new version of LCD monitors. LED monitors backlight uses less power and the screen gets brighter fast and the lighting distribution is more when compared to LCD. printer printer gives the output of the computer programs on a paper there are two types of printers namely impact printer and non impact printer impact printer in this type of printers the ribbon and the head comes in direct contact with the paper some examples of impact printers are dot matrix printer and the line printer dot matrix printer can print 
characters and graphics of different sizes. The output is printed as a combination of tiny dots. It can print at a speed of 300 characters per second and more. The dot matrix printer comes in two standard sizes, 80 column and 132 column. Next, line printer. Line printer can print 300 to 3000 lines per minute. The quality of printing is not so good because the head comes in contact with the paper for less time. Non-impact printer. This printer uses a different technology to form images on paper and the head do not come in direct contact with the paper. They produce very less noise. Some examples of non-impact printers are inkjet printer and laser printer. Inject printer. This printer has tiny nozzles that is outlet which sprays ink forming images on the paper. This is achieved by using magnetized plates which direct the ink's path onto the paper in the desired pattern. The print quality is good in inkjet printers. Next, the laser printer. The laser printer works on the electrostatic technology. It is similar to a Xerox machine. These printers can produce wide selection of characters and graphics and print the same at a high speed. The laser printer can print up to 50 pages per minute. Plotter Plotter is an output device that is used to print graphs and pictures. It draws picture on paper using multiple pens. The lines are not made up of dots but they are actually drawn providing infinite resolution. The plotter was the first computer output device that could print graphs as well as accommodate full-size engineering and architectural drawings. It is mainly used in technical drawing and CAD computer-aided design applications. Speakers Speakers are one of the most commonly used output device used with computers Speakers convert electrical signals into sound. Secondary storage. Secondary storage devices stores data as per user's request. The main memory does not store data permanently. Due to this limitation, the secondary memory device has been developed. These devices are also called as axillary memory or external memory. It has large storage capacity. The typical example for secondary storage devices are floppy disk, hard disk, and compact disk. Floppy disk. It was developed by IBM company. It is used to transfer data or software from one computer to other. A floppy disk is made up of mylar material with magnetic oxide on both sides. Initially, floppy disk were 8 inch in diameter later it was replaced by 5 and 1 quarter inch and 3 and of inch floppy disk are slower to access and the storage capacity is also low when compared to other external storage devices nowadays the floppy disk are not in use hard disk Hard disk is a metallic disk coated with magnetic material which is permanently fixed inside the computer. It is kept in airtight environment that protects the disk from being damaged and also to resist dust. The access speed that is the reading and writing speed is more in the case of hard disk. They generally have large storage capacity which is measured in terms of gigabytes. Hard disk with a storage capacity of 4 terabyte is also available. The capacity of the disk is likely to increase in future. Compact disk, that is CD. The most proving technology for high external storage capacity is compact disk, sometimes known as laser disk or optical disk. CD is a small shiny circular plate made of polycarbonate and is about 12 cm in diameter along with the central hole. The thickness of the CD is 12 mm. Information on the disc is stored in the form of pits and lands using a beam of light. As the disc rotates, the laser head traces out a continuous signal to sense pits and lands. 
This is converted into ones and zeros by the electronic interface and sent to the computer. CDs are of two types, audio CD and video CD. In an audio CD, only sounds are digitized and stored. Whereas in a video CD, the data can be in any form, either text, still pictures or motion pictures with audio combination. CDs can hold a gigabyte of data or more, which is twice the capacity of a floppy disk pack. Digital versatile disk, that is DVD. DVD is a storage device used to store a large amount of data rather than compact disk. It was developed in the year 1995. There are two types of DVD namely recordable and rewritable. DVDs are also available with different storage capacities. Single-sided single layer disk has the capacity 4.7 GB. Single-sided and double-layer disk has the capacity 8.5 GB to 8.7 GB. Double-sided single-layer disk has the capacity 9.4 GB. Double-sided double-layer disk has the capacity 17.08 GB. Pen drive. A pen drive is a portable USB flash memory device for storing and transferring audio, video and data files from a computer. It is used to store large amount of data and provides quick data transfer. It is small in size. It is also called as USB flash drive or thumb drive. It is available with different memory capacities like 2GB, 4GB, 8GB and 16GB etc. So how to use the pen drive? It is very simple to use a pen drive. The user can insert one end of the drive which is equipped with a USB connector into the USB port on a desktop or laptop. Once the drive is active, files can be dragged and dropped or copied and pasted into the pen drive. Memory card. A memory card is used to store various types of electronic data. It is also referred as flash memory card. It is capable of storing a wide range of data files such as audio and video clips, images and text documents. Memory card is used in computers, cell phones and in digital cameras. A card reader is essentially required for the memory card to be connected to the computer. It is available with different memory capacities like 2GB, 4GB, 8GB, 16GB, etc. It also comes in different sizes.